So far in this chapter, we've been talking about high blood pressure, hypertension, antihypertensives, and hypertensive emergency. But we're all done with that. The rest of this chapter will focus on low blood pressure, shock to be exact. So let's leave the earliest 20th century behind and swap out that old school Titanic for an aircraft carrier in the sky. We're heading to the Shock Force Command Center. If you haven't seen shock yet, don't worry, you will. Not only is it a common condition on the inpatient wards, it's also one of the most frequently tested concepts on exams. In this sketch, we'll review the basics of shock, including the clinical presentation of undifferentiated shock, as well as the initial approach to a patient presenting with shock of unknown etiology. In parts two and three of this series, we'll do deep dives into each of the four main types of shock. Let's begin, as we usually do, with an overview of the basics. Shock is defined as a state of tissue hypoxia due to an imbalance between oxygen delivery and oxygen utilization. At Sketchy, shock is represented by our recurring symbol, the lightning bolt. Perfect logo for the shock force, don't you think? Specifically, tissue hypoxia can be caused by inadequate oxygen delivery to tissues, excessive oxygen consumption by tissues, or inadequate utilization of the oxygen delivered to the tissues. Either way you slice it, the tissues are not seeing enough oxygen. Or as the shock force sees it, the tissues are being terrorized by hypoxos, the supervillain lord of oxygen, or uh, lack thereof. That's why he's blue all over. Oh no, hypoxos has kidnapped a member of the shock force. Looks like he was too much for her fragile constitution to handle. But let the fact that she's passed out remind you that hypotension is the most common manifestation of shock. Notice how she's wearing a blood pressure cuff on her arm? Hypotension occurs as a result of circulatory failure, which is the most common pathophysiologic mechanism behind shock. Shock is initially reversible, but it must be recognized and treated immediately to prevent progression to irreversible end organ damage. As you might remember from PATH class, there are four major types of shock, hypovolemic, distributive, cardiogenic, and obstructive. Let's check out our first member of the shock force, Aegir the Norse god of the sea. His weapon of choice? A sponge hammer. Awesome. What are you gonna do? Clean hypoxos to death? Actually, that might work. I don't know. Egeer represents hypovolemic shock, which results from decreased intravascular volume, represented by his low water tank, that in turn leads to decreased cardiac output, hypotension, and shock. Next up, everyone's favorite billionaire playboy genius, Cardio Man. It's exactly who you were thinking, right? Anywho, notice his cracked heart reactor? That's a recurring sketchy symbol for cardiogenic shock. Hmm, must be an early Mark I prototype. Cardiogenic shock results from intracardiac causes of pump failure, which in turn leads to decreased cardiac output, hypotension, and shock. Can you guess who the third member of shock force is? Yep, you got it. It's Captain Shield. I assume you guessed Captain Shield. The captain's trademark lightning shield is a recurring sketchy symbol for obstructive shock. In contrast to cardiogenic shock, obstructive shock results from extracardiac causes of pump failure. Think of the causes of obstructive shock, which we'll cover in part three of this series, as obstructing the flow of blood into the heart. Finally, we arrive at the final member of shock force, the distributor. Clearly the anchor of the team, am I right? Anywho, he represents the fourth and final type of shock. Distributive shock. Distributive shock is characterized by severe peripheral vasodilation, represented by the distributor's big red arms and legs. All that vasodilation leads to a significant drop in systemic vascular resistance and, consequently, blood pressure, since BP is equal to cardiac output times SVR. So, hypotension is easy enough to recognize. However, sussing out the specific type of shock is a bit tougher. That's where Sketchy comes in. We use the term undifferentiated shock to refer to situations when shock is recognized, but the type and etiology are still unclear. Check out parts two and three of this series for all the deets on the four different types of shock.